guys, welcome to week number one of Project Planche. This is the first of a video series that I'm going to be doing detailing my progress through the free program that I released called Project Planche. If you want to use the program, then head on into the description down below. There is a free download link uh, and you can do what you please with it. Um, use it for inspiration, actually follow the program, um, or tell me that I'm useless and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, one thing I would like to say is thank you to everyone who has downloaded the program, shared the program, whatever. Uh, as we're speaking today, it is up to about 6.3 thousand downloads, which is absolutely crazy and I've never expected to get this sort of response. So thank you again if you download the program or shared or whatever. Um, it's unbelievable. I'm really, really excited. So as of last week, I released the program. So it's been live for a week now and I put out a contest. Uh, in that contest, we are giving away the following. A whole month supply of Oxlum multivitamin and also this t-shirt that I am wearing. Um, and I'm glad to announce that we do have a winner. Uh, so using a random number generator, I put in the top ranges of the comments and then selected a random number, which happened to be eight. And the person who won is David Doff. Uh, there should be an image on screen now of the winner uh, and I let him know that he won and he actually told me that he's following the Project Blanche program as we speak and he's also using my stretching routine so I am really really happy that he's won, I think that's awesome. Um, he's from Vienna so we'll be sending these out as well as Ardor will be sending you this t-shirt and some shorts so congratulations bro, um, go check him out if you want to follow, he does by the looks of things, lots of handstands and CrossFit style working out. So, um, link as well as that in the description. So, congratulations and thank you for everyone who's entered. But let's get on to week one. So, week one is an introductory week into the program. The idea here is to adjust to the program. We're going to be going for sort of middle of the range sets and reps. We're going to be going and finding out our baseline strength. Uh, in the week before the start of this program and the first week, I did test out some of my goals. That was including planche, front lever, handstand press-ups, shoulder mobility, middle split mobility. All of this has worked during the program, so it's easy to use this first week as kind of establishing the baseline of those skills, and then we can assess when we get to the end how well we did. So, um, in this video, I'm going to go through the whole week of training as well as the other little bits and bobs added around my training to help my performance, as mentioned in the program. So without further ado, let's get into the video and we can start with our first day, which is straight arm day in the gym. So straight into the workout on this straight arm day, the first day and the first week of the program. As you can see here, I'm starting my warm up. If you want to see the full warm up video, then there is a link in the description down below to check it out or you can just refer to the program, which is also in the description down below, along with everything else I talk about today. Kicking off this straight arm session with some tux plants isometrics. We're not really going for anything serious in this workout or this week. We're just sat in a baseline standard, trying to establish our base level of skill so we can then we can assess when we get to the end of the program how much we've improved. The same for front lever. I'm going to be working some straddle front lever isometrics for between 8 and 12 second holds. The reason it's 8 to 12 seconds is because of the ratio that I'm using. That is one rep equals two seconds of eccentric, uh, sorry, two seconds of isometric or two seconds of uh, one second of eccentric. So the way I'm going to be establishing my progression is I'm going to be doing these two base skills. So I've got tuck frog hold for seven and a half seconds. That's establishing my planche base skill. And then I'm going for some full front lever holds and I manage a 3.5 second hold. So my goals for the end of this project are to get a two second pike straddle planche and a five second front lever. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to make it, but it's going to be a tough one to go to. Also working some straddle presses. Um, the rep range on these is lower than on the program, but that's because the exercise itself is quite intense. And then as you should do with mo as if you can with handstand exercises, and that's pair it with L-sit um, exercises as the, the muscles kind of balance each other out. So I'm trying to hit here sort of uh, three sets of 10 to 15 seconds. Something I like to do with my L-sits 
is just to stretch out afterwards and kind of like practice my compression because that is essentially what is lacking for me. I can hold my body in the right position but I can't lift my legs up. Uh, and then again establishing a little bit of my base level. Um, even though this is a shocking press, I actually managed just about uh, two, maybe two and a half reps on this one. So this was probably my best set of the day. Um, I'd really like to be able to rep this out for sort of three or five, although it's not really a big goal, um, as I've already attained the Stolder Press earlier this year, or last year even. Next I'm moving on to the shoulder mobility, which is a big goal in this program, and I'm using these elevated bridge holds. Somebody did mention to me that you basically want to have your shoulders further than your hands, so I'm actually using a too difficult progression here, and you'll see in one of the next clips that I used an easier progression and that allows me to get my shoulders over my hands to maximize that loaded stretch. Shoulder mobility for me is something that's really holding me back uh, and it's definitely something that can help with your training a lot, make a lot of things um, a lot easier, especially with the handstand. So that's why I'm, it's a big part of this program. Go along down the same lines of shoulder mobility, we're putting in some skin the cats. This is also in the warm up but we're just using a bit of a higher intensity for the exercise itself and that's trying to keep those legs as straight as possible to incorporate some core. I love this exercise just for the shoulders and also conditioning the bicep tendons. So as I said earlier, um, I'm going for a little bit of an easier progression here and I actually get my shoulders about in line with my wrist. So this is going to be my base level of skill for the bridge. I'm going to come back to this in eight weeks time and hopefully I should be much improved but we will see. So that is coming to the end of the straight arm day now we're going to move on to the, the lower mobility routine which is front splits to this day. I use the uh, Emmett Lewis method for my lower body mobility so if you want to find out more go over to his channel and he has so many videos on loaded mobility um, so it's definitely worth looking at because he'll explain it much better than I do. So for the hip flexors I've been using this kneeling bridge quad stretch and it's a good way to build strength in quite a stretched out position for the hip flexors. Um, you also build the quad, uh, sorry the glute strength as well which is something that's weak for me. So this is a bonus exercise, I'm strengthening my glutes and I'm stretching out my hip flexors. Uh, Definitely there is progressions you can do for this exercise if you're not flexible enough to sit on your uh, knees and, and feet like that. Just got to find what works for you. Next I mentioned about Emmett Lewis. Uh, these are where these pulsing hamstring stretches are coming from. and uh, We're just aiming for 72 reps. And then using a way to evaluate how um, far down we're going by putting a fist in between the toes and your elbow. And I managed to get three fingers on the first round of my um, right leg and I managed the fist on the left leg. So this is kind of again my baseline level of ability and hopefully we're looking to improve this a lot by the end of the program. I then also would follow this up with some front split holds but I was a little bit stupid and simply forgot to record them. So I'm going for a 30 to 60 second hold just sitting in front splits the furthest I can go to, just to build strength in that range of motion. Right guys, so that was a pretty intense gym session. First session of the week, straight arm day. Pretty awesome, lots of leg mobility. Feel really good, really confident with this program. I'm really excited to see where it goes. I'm feeling strong at the beginning, so who knows? Um, as well as the training, I'm just going to show you a little glimpse into my post-workout nutrition as well and I'll probably throw some other things into this week that are associated with training. So without further ado, I'll quickly show you my post-workout post shake. As I said, this won't be too much in depth with this, it'll kind of just be like a glimpse because improving with your training isn't all about training, it is about your lifestyle as well. It's about your sleep, your habits, your eating. So let me quickly show you that and then probably on to the next day of exercise. So we have the stack going on here, right. So I'm gonna keep it brief. Um, we've got 
whey protein, obvious reasons. Collagen protein, this is another form of protein that's great for your joints. Gymnastics is quite, and calisthenics is quite a joint intensive exercise, so I like to keep that in there. Creatine, for obvious reasons, uh, awesome for performance. Ashwagandha powder, now this is possibly, if it actually focuses, is something that I'm gonna make a video about because there's some awesome new research coming out about that that indicates that it's kind of the new creatine, almost a natural steroid, but you have to either have a Google or pay attention, but it's essentially an adaptogen, um, really good for just helping you cope with stress, but also has been proven to improve muscle strength. So, interesting one, would definitely recommend, but a video to come shortly. I've also got maca powder, if it will ever focus, um, which again is uh, an adaptogen that I'm throwing in there as well. And then for flavoring, we have cacao powder, so it's basically gonna be chocolate, coconut water for the post-workout um, electrolytes, and then honey for sweetness. And then I like to throw in a little bit of fat into my um, post-workout shake. So I've got some Brain Octane, which is an MCT, and some chia seeds as well. Just gonna throw that in there. So that's basically it. I pretty much have this every time I work out. And um, there's it, so on to the next day. I also forgot to mention that I usually have a banana in there as well, but we don't actually have any bananas, so a little bit less carbs, but I might have an apple or something as well. So, it is day number two of this routine. It is a rest day. Um, so what I like to do on rest days, as I've put in the program, is I like to try and stay active in some way or another. Try and stay and get some blood flow and really try and recover as well as possible. So what I like to do is a bit of a mobility routine. If you want to check out my full mobility routine, then there is a link in the description to um, a full video where I explain everything that I do, uh, how often I do it, why I do it, etc. Check out the description below to check that out. But today, I'll just give you some glimpses. So I'm at work at the moment, and I'm very fortunate to have this huge space, which you can see behind me, um, which is an empty floor. So maybe a couple of times a week, I like to come down here at lunch. I've got an hour, so I'll, I'll spend sort of half an hour like foam rolling and stretching and that sort of stuff. So you're, you're about to see that today. Um, so that's essentially it. If you want to see the full routine in the description down below, also with the program. Um, and let's get to what I'm going to do today. So guys, on this active rest day, I am basically recovering. If you looked in the program, you see I have a series of recovery methods, uh, two of which I'm utilizing today. I'm gonna be foam rolling, as well as using these lacrosse balls to give myself a full body kind of self massage. And then I'm also gonna be pairing that with my full stretching routine, which as I mentioned, is in the description down below. So I just try and kind of work my entire body with this foam roller. Uh, it's a really hard one to teach people how to do because there kind of is no real set way of doing it. You just kind of got to find where it's sore and just really iron it out. Um, this stretching routine as well is something that I've done for about a year and I really, really enjoy doing it. Just loosens up all my muscles and I think it's a pretty comprehensive full body routine. So guys, welcome to day three and that is the dynamic day. Uh, I'm just warming up here in the classes room. Fortunately, I could get a break from the really busy gym. Uh, I'm doing a not very good handstand, but I think I'm just trying to test my straddle planche and see where it's at. And as you can see, it's pretty far away. Hopefully though, towards the end of this program, we should be a lot closer. So we're training planche today with these bull pseudo planche leans. Uh, these are one of my favorite exercises just for kind of working out that tipping point, that balancing point and really emphasizing how much you need to lean in this planche movement because that is something that I've struggled with for a while. I actually just don't lean enough with my wrist to counteract my long ass legs. So that's what I'm using this exercise for. It's pretty intense, you'll probably see by my shaking arms, but I really like this one for building up that muscle memory. I'm pairing that with these advanced tuck front lever pulls. And these are just kind of um, mainly eccentrics but it's just good for, uh, again, building that muscle memory. I'm trying to pause in that front lever position on the way down and then just go back up. Uh, this is a little bit more dynamic than just holding static holds. 
uh, and it also incorporates the full range of motion as well. As you can see, the gym is pretty busy, uh, but that is the Janu Janu it's January for you, isn't it? Set number two for these pseudo planche leans. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a quick tip, and that is if you notice the middle or uh, top of my back is most of the time, you can kind of see it protruding from the top, and that's because I'm always in that hollow body position. When doing this exercise, that is probably the most important thing is try and keep your scapula tensed and keep your shoulders pushed as far away from you as you can and really arch that upper back, staying in that hollow body position. It's gonna make you stronger in the planche, um, so it's going to transfer over for sure. Then for our B1, we've got these ring muscle ups. Now unfortunately I don't have anywhere that high in the gym, so I'm having to do L-sit muscle ups, which is going to make this exercise a little bit more intense, um, but still nonetheless, uh, I can definitely get it done. My muscle up is something that's somewhat weak, uh, but that's mostly because my false grip is weak. So. You'll see at the end of this workout that I have incorporated some grip training to try and improve that and hopefully my muscle up should improve as a result. But I can barely get four reps. I'm happy with three, but I would like to get numbers up more. Just give you a side angle here um, to show you the importance of getting those shoulders forward when you do this movement. So really like throwing your shoulders straight over the rings is gonna make it a hell of a lot easier. You shouldn't have to do this movement dynamically you should be able to literally just pull really really slowly and with good technique like here I should be able to put my shoulders over the rings and go up without having to get off the rings. So in the next stage of our workout we're going for these Edo portal bridge rotations. As I mentioned before shoulder mobility is a big aim in this program and trying to make it a little bit more dynamic by incorporating these rotations as they're just great for uh, general leg mobility as well as that shoulder mobility. You kind of just have to use all those posterior muscles to keep your back off the ground. I'm not very good at them but it's something I'm enjoying and it's a little bit different so I'm just going to keep working at them and hopefully we should see some good progression here and I'll be into more of a full bridge rather than this really low bridge that I am in currently. I'd also like to say thank you to Ardor for the top that I'm rocking in this video which is their strength and mobility t-shirt. Next, we're hitting up some single arm hangs. As I mentioned earlier, my grip is weak. So we're just going for max holds with that single arm. I think I managed about 45 to 60 seconds on each arm, which I'm actually pretty pleased with, but it actually wrecks your calluses on your hand. So be careful with this one and use chalk. Again, just a different angle for these bridge rotations. Uh, sped them up a little bit, but I'm pretty pleased considering I couldn't do this not that long ago. So the progression is coming, and then hopefully this program is gonna further help that. Now we move on to the other lower body mobility routine in this program, and that is the middle splits. So we're gonna be kicking off this middle split routine with horse squats. These are great for improving your glute strength and abductor strength, which is really important for the middle splits. Surprisingly, it's not so much a flexibility thing, but more of a strength thing. Your body doesn't know that it's strong enough to hold you in that position, and that's what these exercises are about building. When performing the horse squat, you wanna try and push your knees out and push your pelvis forward, so you're putting yourself into more of a split hold. I promise you, these ones burn. Then we're going into the obvious, and that's the middle split hold. Now you're gonna see how bad my middle split mobility is. Uh, I am actually commentating this in week three and I've seen quite a considerable improvement. So I'm gonna be utilizing more middle split training as well as more front split low mobility work on my off days to try and further improve this. This is a lot harder than it looks and the whole time you wanna be tensing your abductors as hard as you can, that's the inside of your leg. Also find a floor that's gonna be suitable. If it's too slippery, you're not gonna be able to hold it, and if it's too sticky, then it's just gonna be a walk in the park for you. So find a happy medium. Socks and a carpet is a good shout. 
The next one we're going to go to is the pancake. Uh, and this is essentially, you just want to fold yourself in half. Um, and this is going to really help if you're working on a straddle press handstand or a stolder press um, because it's really going to help with that compression. Uh, this is something I've been working on now for like two years, so it's not really an issue for me. Um, although I'm just trying to maintain my flexibility in this position at the moment. I recently achieved chest to floor in this exercise, so um, I don't feel too bad about it. And I'm, as you can see, I'm pretty flat. Although there is still much work that needs doing, but I just want to stay comfortable in this position. When you're holding this stretch, you should be tensing your legs the entire time. So guys, what is up? Um, it is day number four maybe, um, and as I said on day number two, which was my L rest day, I am going to be working with these, and I'm going to be doing some foam rolling because my rear delts are still sore, uh, and a little bit of stretching, so I'm not going to go into it in detail again in this video. Just a reminder, in the description down below is a link to the mobility video, so check that out if you want, and that's why I'm going to be doing that. So guys, into day five, and it is bent arm day, the third upper body day of the week, and we haven't hit a lower body day yet. This is a bro's dream. <laughs> so again, in the normal warm up before we get into some handstand push-ups. Now with the handstand push-ups, I cannot perform more than one rep in a set, so I'm just going for max reps, trying to just work the movement and really build that muscle memory in a full range of motion. Trying to get my head to the ground, and back up to a nice clean handstand again. We're going for quality, not quantity here. We're gonna be pairing these with our other secondary goal, and that is the one arm chin up. So as a progression, I'm using these mantle chin ups, which I got from the Body by Rings program by Fitness FAQs. This is an awesome exercise, as it's a really, really good progression for the one arm chin up. You can make it as difficult or as hard as you like. I'm going for just one ring separation here and five reps. You want to take a little bit of rest between sides because you still use the other arm while you're doing this exercise. So to make sure you perform both evenly, I would definitely recommend the 30 to 60 second rest between the left and the right or the right and the left side. Make sure you go all the way down and start the movement with the arm you're working scapula and make sure you lock out all the way at the top as well to get full effect from this exercise. As I said the handstand push up is a secondary goal so here is me establishing a baseline of skill, um, base level of skill sorry and that is basically a head to ground good form handstand push up. The goal by the end of this program is to be able to perform a set of three. Likewise for the one arm chin up, this is my establishing my baseline. I actually managed to get just about a full range of motion one arm chin up on my right arm about a week before I started the program, but my left arm was a little bit more pitiful. I really like to get one one arm chin up on each arm by the end of this program. I can actually almost get a chin up from like three quarters hang, but not from a dead hang on my left arm. We're then going into some more planche exercise. That's right, we're training planche three times a week. It is a planche program. So I'm utilizing these pseudo planche push ups. If you can do a harder progression, the tuck planche push up would be great. You can also use bands to kind of assist you. But for me, this is plenty challenging enough. And I'm again focusing on quality, not quantity making sure I'm in a full lockout in that hollow body position at the top and then keeping my forward lean all the way throughout the movement including in the bottom hand so your hand should be by your hips at the bottom and shoulders well over at the top. I'm supersetting this with these front lever rows. My front lever row is actually quite a weak part. I've almost got a full front lever but my row is just awful. I'm not sure if I'm weak in the biceps and that might also be letting me down with the one arm chin up. So I'm throwing these in along with the planche push-ups to improve that. Another angle on the planche push-ups here and you can see I'm really trying to push that scapula and my upper back and all the way 
throughout the movement, trying to stay in that hollow body position. It's going to make the exercise a hell of a lot harder, but a hell of a lot more beneficial. If you find this too intensive on your wrists, you can use parallel bars as well in this exercise. I then try to superset this exercise with these kind of wrist push-ups. As I said, the quite a painful exercise on your wrist, and this is a good way of strengthening your wrist and strengthening the extensors, which is something you don't train a lot in normal training. Then onto the shoulder mobility section of this upper body workout and some quite pitiful bridge push-ups. As you can see, my shoulder flexibility is pretty shocking, but hopefully this will improve by the end. Ideally here, you want to have your shoulders over your hands uh, and you should have your weight on your toes rather than I've got mine here pressed through my heels. But hopefully, if I keep training this three times a week, then it's got to improve. This is also a good exercise for strengthening the glutes, but people like to get in the way of the shot so you can't always see that. I have no idea what this guy was doing, he must have been blind. This final hold here actually doesn't look that bad. We're then supersetting that, super that with some tricep exercises and we're going for these overhead tricep extensions. This is going to build strength in the uh, biggest part of the tricep and it's also going to correlate to that overhead pressing strength which should help the handstand push up. This is also a good exercise for your core as you have to keep that hollow body position the entire time. As you can see, I'm shaking quite a bit by the end of it. And then, I didn't feel like I incorporated enough core into this particular routine uh, or workout, so I'm utilizing a core workout. This actually isn't one that's in the program, but it's quite a simple one. I'm essentially going for a 9-6-3 uh, V-ups and then arch-ups and then continuing down. So I'm doing nine V-ups here which is actually a lot harder than it looks, or just for me anyway. And then I'm rolling over and I'm doing nine of these arch ups. So we're gonna be targeting the lower back and the glutes, as well as the hip flexors and the abs. This, these arch ups are also great for your posterior muscles and overhead mobility, as it's gonna strengthen those rear delts. So we've completed the set of nine, and then now we're gonna move on to a set of six on both sides, and then a set of three to finish up. This is a good way to burn out the muscles. Your core is actually more of an endurance uh, muscle than it is a strength muscle, so it's always important to include adequate volume when training your core. However, doing this program, there should be adequate core intensive exercises to mean that you don't have to do a core circuit on every single workout. So now moving into the lower body day, day number six. I actually have a glute injury at the moment, so I can't properly squat. However, I can do lower weight quite comfortably. And I did also discover that I can do split squats quite comfortably as well, which is what you're gonna be seeing me do today. These split squats are pretty much the only way I can actually go heavy on legs at the moment without injuring myself further. But I can also build glute and quad strength quite effectively in this position. You're seeing me now just do a few extra warm-ups that I'd usually do on legs that I haven't included in the program. That involves squats and straight leg deadlifts just to warm up the hamstrings. So we're starting off, as I said, with these weighted split squats. This is probably one of the only heavy leg, egg, leg exercises that I can currently do. Um, I also really like this exercise because it's good at building stability. Like there's quite a lot of balance involved in this exercise as well as strength. I'm trying to strengthen my, straighten my legs on each rep to make the balance more extreme. It gets a lot tougher on the second set as well because you're still working both legs on each side.
As you can see here, I'm sipping on some Oxlint, which is also another sponsor of this routine. They're a close family friend and they're a supplement that I've been using for a long time. So we paired those split squats with these natural hamstring curls. I've struggled to find a place to do these curls, but this seems to be the best one. The idea here is to have your body completely straight and just hinge at the knees, but my glutes and hamstrings are nowhere near strong enough to do that, so I'm having to bend a little bit in the, uh, at the hips to make this exercise a little bit harder. This is a really, really tough exercise. It's also a good builder for your calves as well as your hamstrings. This is probably one of the best body weight exercises for legs that I can think of, which is why I included it. As we're establishing some base level skills, I thought I'd throw in this 65 kilo split squat as I feel that this actually isn't a bad weight. Although it's still not strong by any means, but my leg strength is somewhere that's lacking. But that's one and a half years of body weight leg training for you. So I did find this kind of groovy uh, shoulder stretch utilizing the bar and the squat rack to really push my shoulders open and then walk back with my feet. So as I mentioned about body weight uh, leg training, we're doing a little bit of weighted and strength based stuff at the beginning and then we're going to follow that up with this circuit of body weight skills on predominantly single leg balancing exercises. So this is my favourite body weight exercise to do and that is the pit stool squat to the shrimp squat. It's very quad dominant but it's just kind of cool for a mobility and balance point of view. You don't have to hold on to your toes when you do this exercise if you're not flexible enough. And the same with the shrimp squat at the back, you can just let your leg hang loose um, and then let it touch the ground as well as your toes when you go all the way down to the bottom. We're going to be following these up with these single leg glute ham raises. I like to point my toes up to the ceiling on this exercise as I feel it makes the exercise more intense as well as works the calves more. This is again a great exercise for the glutes and the hamstrings, an area that lacks for me and I'm really trying to build strength and muscle memory in. The point of this leg workout as well is that you should be able to do a majority of it without a gym and just anywhere. So it's definitely a traveling workout as well as a good body weight circuit. We're then moving on to the Cossack squat. The way I like to find how wide my feet should be of this is start in the middle and then you point your heels out and then toes out and you do that five times until you reach this position. For me, this is a little bit of a weak point because I have quite tight ankles. Again, something that I'm working on with my lower body mobility days. Um, as you can see, I fell over a couple of times, which is pretty shocking. This is also a great exercise for building some dynamic flexibility for the middle splits and hamstring. This exercise also does seem to go on for quite some time. Finally, we're working some single leg straight leg deadlifts and that puts us up to two quad and two hamstring dominant exercises. I like to do this one with a little weight, although for me it's more balance and then also focusing on contracting the right muscles i.e. the hamstrings and the glutes to properly do the exercise. Ideally you want to have your body in a completely straight line so you want to keep the opposite glute tensed as well but I am a little bit off here. So I threw in a couple of additional exercises on this leg day and that was mainly focused around mobility. First of all with these Jefferson curls, um, this is great just for building some weighted uh, mobility into your routine. It's really nice for just mobilizing your entire spine as well as stretching out your hamstrings. Now this is sped up a little bit because uh, otherwise we'd be here for like a minute for this set. But the idea is you start at the head and you just curl all the way around until you get to the bottom of your spine and then you curl from the bottom back up again. So 
you don't want to be keeping your back straight with this one, you want to keep it curved. As I said, I'm trying to improve my middle splits, so I threw some additional three sets of 30 to 60 seconds in here, and I'm pretty happy with how deep I managed to go with this set. One of the main reasons I want to incorporate more middle split training is that it will make my straddle planche a lot easier if I have a better straddle. But that is it for this week guys. I'm going to finish on up with a little bit of an outro, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a comment down below if you have any tips or just let me know how you're getting on with the program. I'll catch up with you guys next week. So that is it for week one guys. I'm really excited about this program. It feels good, the volume feels right. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna do well and I really hope that you find the same. Next week we'll be looking at week number two, which is going to be our overload eccentric week. So hopefully it's gonna be some progression in strength, but we're probably gonna be sore, but we will leave that till next week in between. If you haven't started the program or checked out the program, link is in the description below, as well as my full warm-up video and my stretching routine and everything else that I probably mentioned in this video. So go check that out down below and have an awesome week. See you guys later. Peace.